Hey, I want to take a look at this article, ladies and gentlemen. This is in the Wall Street Journal. They're actually talking about Tether. I want to first, I'm going to go through this article. I'm probably not going to read the whole thing. I'll read most of it. And then I'm also going to get, I want to get your thoughts in the comments. And I'm going to be, give you my commentary toward the end as well. I actually think this article is not what it seems to be. I think there's something here a little bit more um, maybe secretive going on. Other than just taking this article at face value, I'll share my thoughts with you towards the end of the video. And I'd love to get your thoughts of all this as well. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you like someone who takes an objective look at the news, someone who can sort of look beyond the obvious headlines to discuss what might actually be going on, do me a favor, smash that like button. All right. Hopefully you'll hit the subscribe button, and if you don't hit the subscribe button, then maybe I'll earn your subscribe by the end of the video. The shadow dollar that's fueling the financial underworld. Hmm, this sounds scary and ominous. Cryptocurrency tether enables a parallel economy that operates beyond the reach of the U.S. law enforcement. Isn't that, like, doesn't that make sense? But why is that a bad thing? Well... A giant, unregulated currency, ooh, that's scary, is undermining America's fight against arm dealers, sanction busters, and scammers. Again, those scary bud buzzwords. Almost as much money flowed through its network last year as through Visa, and it has recently minted more profit than BlackRock with a tiny fraction of the workforce. Its name? Tether. The cryptocurrency has grown into an important cog in the global financial system with as much as $190 billion changing hands daily. In essence, Tether is a digital dollar, though one privately controlled in the U.S. Virgin Isles by a secret, secretive crew of owners with its activities largely hidden from governments. By the way, I want to come back to this. Tether is not changing, is not changing hands at $190 billion daily. First of all, let's be very clear. This is a digital product. You can't actually change hands. But it's not even, it's not even changing wallet address as, as such. Like This is a bit – because you got to understand, Tether is used on decentralized exchanges. They're talking about all transactions, the total turnover you know, daily. But that's not – it's not like it's actual $190 of physical transactions from one party to another. It's just, I mean, all the fees that happens, all the buying and selling on Uniswap, et cetera. So that's, that's a little bit of a, uh, misrepresentation. But again, unless you're in crypto and you understand that this sounds like, <gasps> Oh my goodness. What, what's going on with this, this mysterious tether thing, by the way, I'm no personal fan of tether in general, generally speaking. I mean, a fan of cryptocurrency, so I can find myself, leaning towards Tether's side a little bit when it comes against any government in the world, including the U.S. government. However, I'm not a fan of Tether, and I'll explain why towards the end of the video. In essence, Tether is a digital U.S. dollar, though it one privately controlled by the Bridges Virgin Islands by a secretive crew of owners with its activities largely hidden from the governments. I'm glad they said this right here because most people never, in crypto, most people never talk about who's behind Tether. They're not exactly church boys. Known as a stable coin for a one-to-one -one peg to the dollar, Tether gained early use among crypto aficionados, but it has spread deep into the financial underworld, enabling a parallel economy that operates beyond the reach of the U.S. law enforcement. Well, wouldn't that actually be all decentralized cryptocurrency, by the way, beyond the reach? And in, in all fairness, Tether's not exactly beyond the reach. I mean, Tether does comply with some U.S. sanctions, which is interesting when they're like, oh, Tether's beyond the reach of U.S. law enforcement, but Tether has, in fact, chosen for whatever reason to comply with many U.S. sanctions. Let's keep going. Wherever the U.S. government has restricted access to the dollar financial system, Iran, Venezuela, and Russia, Tether thrives as a sort of incognito dollar used to move money across borders. It's not really incognito, by the way. Tether is trackable and traceable. Russian oligarchs and weapon dealers shuttle Tether aboard to, abroad to buy property and pay suppliers for sanctioned goods. Venezuela's sanctioned state oil firm takes payment and tether for cargoes. Drug cartels, fraud rings, and terrorist groups such as Hamas use it to launder income. Again, the fascinating thing is tether is pretty much trackable on, on a blockchain. So again, I don't you know what's not trackable on a blockchain? Physical dollars. Do you know what gets used more by drug cartels, fraud rings, and terrorist groups, and even Hamas? Do you know what gets used more? Uh, U.S. physical dollars, but again, they're not going to talk about that. They're going to demonize Tether, an actual cryptocurrency. Yet, in dysfunctional economies such as Argentina, Turkey, beset by hyperinflation and a shortage of hard currency, 
Tether is a lifeline for people who use it for payments and as a way to protect their savings. Exactly. Which, by the way, this is the only uh, paragraph or sentence in this entire article that talks about the importance of something like Tether or cryptocurrency in general, ultimately giving average individuals more economic independence. Which, by its very nature, to have economic independence, you need to make certain that currency instrument is outside the control, the manipulation of a government, including the U.S. government. Tether is arguably the first successful real-world product to emerge from a cryptocurrency revolution that began over a decade ago. Uh, that's not true. It has made its owners immensely rich. That's true. Tether has $120 billion in assets, mostly risk-free U.S. Treasury bills, along with positions in Bitcoin and gold. Last year, it generated $6.2 billion in profit, out-earning BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, by $700 million. That's crazy. But by, by the way, this also goes to, to speak to the efficiency of cryptocurrency in the long run. I mean, I think it's incredible. Theoretically, this is they're talking about uh, Tether here, but theoretically, imagine... Average people benefiting, for example, from uh, decentralization, decentralized finance going mainstream. Imagine something like Uniswap producing, you know, six billion dollars in fees, and those fees all going to individual liquidity providers who are staking their tokens on there instead of going to the corporate banks of the world. Think about that for a moment. I think that is incredible technology for the future but let's keep going of course it's going to be bad because it'll out earn blackrock and instead of large corporate greedy interest and i don't have a problem with corporations i don't have a problem with people making a lot of money i have a problem when corporations take freedom away from average individuals they infringe upon an individual's economic freedom and blackrock in fact does that tether ceo Palio, Palio, however you say his name, boasted earlier this year that with 100 employees, they earn more profit per person than any company ever. That's correct. Tether wants to build a fair, more connected, and accessible global financial system, the CEO said in a May press release. He claims over 300 million people are using the currency. 300 million wallet addresses is not 300 million people. With sanctions, Washington can cut adversaries off from the dollar and thus much of the global trading system since all dollar transactions involve U.S. regulated banks. Tether's popularity subverts those powers. We need a regulatory we need a regulatory framework that doesn't allow offshore dollar-backed stablecoin providers to play by a different set of rules. No, 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 no. Mr. Treasury Secretary, Deputy Treasury Secretary Wally, where where in the world is Wally, Waldo? Wally. No, sir, that's not what you need. It's not even possible to create that. It's absolutely impossible to create a regulatory framework that's going to be able to control any form of decentralized stablecoin, and we are going to eventually have a decentralized stablecoin. Mark my words, you heard it here first. By the way, smash that like button as we continue on. For this article, the journal spoke with Tether users, researchers, and officials and reviewed messages exchanges between intermediaries, court and corporate records and blockchain data. Tether didn't respond to requests for comment. The company said in May it collaborates with law enforcement and was upgrading its capacity to monitor transactions for sanctions evasion. There you go right there. They're sitting here working on complying. Tether voluntarily freezes the digital wallets used to transfer its tokens that were connected with sanctioned entities, it says, and has a protective approach to safeguarding our ecosystem against illicit activities. There you go. Tether has already complied with the U.S. government and U.S. government sanctions in some cases. I think this is fascinating, and it's one of the things I actually don't like about Tether because I want a true decentralized product in the end. All right, I'm not going to keep going with this, but here's what I'll say. You can go read through this if you want. It's uh, on the Wall Street Journal. Here's what I'll end up saying. Let's talk about what I don't like about Tether. First of all, I don't like the fact that Tether is actually not truly decentralized. It's a centralized product that, that can be used in a decentralized system. Um, I like that Tether is somewhat independent of the U.S. government, but they're not fully independent of the government. I think this article is a bit misleading, and here's why I think it's misleading. I think the real purpose of this article, well, let me ask you, what do you think the real purpose of this article is? Let me know down in the comments. Go ahead and pause the video. Let me know down in the comments and then come back to this video. And I'll explain to you what I think the real purpose of this article actually is. But let's take a look at what this article does because it gives us clues. The article attempts to demonize Tether. Why does it demonize Tether? Because it said bad people are using this product. Well, bad people use the U.S. dollar. Bad people use Bitcoin. But bad people use this product, therefore it's bad, therefore we should it should be somehow controlled. 
Um, it's a part of this shadow financial system, which, by the way, all of decentralized finance could be considered even more shadowier because it doesn't have centralized entities for the most part that can control it or that can stop it. So I, I think if you look at the way they're trying to demonize Tether here, I think this is basically a move, a PR move, to stomp out competition, to build a case. There's, there's some sort of plan at foot here uh, to ultimately they need to stop Tether so they can create their own central bank digital currency. They need a central bank digital currency in the U.S. Other governments around the world want a central bank digital currency in the end. And in order to have a central bank digital currency, you need people to use that currency and you don't need competition. That's what I think is going on here. I could be totally wrong. I don't think this is an independent journalist at all. I think this is probably one of those things where someone said, hey, cover this and – the journalist covering it doesn't actually know why he's covering it, just that he was told to cover this news story, do some research on it, write the article. And I think he wrote the article. But I just wonder what powers that be are saying, hey, we need readers around the world to start looking poorly at Tether. The other thing about Wall Street Journal is it typically goes to a, a non-crypto um, savvy audience. It tends to go to an older audience. It tends to go to an audience that is deeply entrenched inside the traditional financial system that exists and they're not actively investing in cryptocurrency and if they are they're doing it through etfs they're not doing it by buying bitcoin and holding bitcoin in a cold wallet so i find this article very interesting i find the slant of the article very interesting and i don't fully trust this article i don't take it at face value am i being a little bit crazy let me know down in the comments i'd love to know what your thoughts are ladies and gentlemen hopefully you've liked this video do me a favor smash that like button click the subscribe button click that bell notification icon and click all by the way if you want to learn how I am trading cryptocurrency with the goal of earning, growing my account from $20,000 ultimately to $1 million. Take a look at the video on your end screen. Thanks for watching. This is Crypto Wealth. I'm out.